from Fred Phelps to the Kinsey Six. The best of the best from Central Kansas and beyond. We do it all. We are KJag Radio and the Jiggy Jaguar Radio Show. Log on to JiggyJaguar.com and KJagRadio.com for more. Thanks for joining us here on KJagRadio.com. I'm Jiggy Jag, Jigman Freud, Count Jigular, out here at the McPherson Opera House in downtown McPherson. Marilyn May is in the vicinity, and we're going to be talking to her here in just a few moments. The extraordinary, legendary Marilyn May. And let's go talk to her right now. Well, okay. th- thanks for doing this, by the way. I appreciate well, thank it. You. I'm um, glad. Tell thank me, you. tell me a little bit about uh, working with the legendary Steve Allen. Oh, Steve. Oh, well, Steve was my discoverer. Yeah. <laughs> I had been working for twenty years, and Steve um, heard me and um, just called me on the phone and said, "I want you to do my prime time show." That's when he had a prime time show in L.A. We were working a little club in Kansas City. Uh, five nights a week and had been there by that time we'd been there about 10 years Wow! Uh, we were there a total of 11 years but um, he had the primetime show and he called me in Kansas City and invited me to come out and do the show so we would go out and do his show and then go back to our little club in Kansas City and uh, work five nights a week uh, except in the summertime we would travel and go to Lake Tahoe and Vegas because my daughter was out of school then but um, on the last show that I did of Steve Allen, a man from RCA saw me, and he said, I want to record you with RCA. Wow. And that was in 64, and uh, we did seven albums on RCA because of Steve Allen, which was wonderful. He, was, now, he loved talent, and he was a renaissance man. You know, he was brilliant. He loved, um, he wrote books, he played the piano, he wrote songs, he, he did everything. And, Beautifully so. Now I understand that you, uh, your your fabulous fabulous career so far has included some radio. Things. I have done a lot of radio. Um, years ago, when I was a little girl, I had I won an amateur contest, and it wasn't Star Search, it was like that. <laughs> but, but or American Idol. But it was. Um, oh, you you are you are too good for American <laughs> Idol. <laughs> well, it was. Um, I was a little girl, and I won the amateur contest, and the prize was a 13-week show on WIBW. Then when I graduated from high school, and I went to Louisville, Kentucky, and there was a wonderful station there called WHAS in Louisville, and they had a full orchestra. In those days on radio, there was a full orchestra once a week. So wow. I got incredible experience working with violins and that kind of thing. So. It was not foreign to me when I started doing symphony concerts. Um, then they also, twice a week, we had a small combo, much like I'm working with tonight. Uh, piano, bass, and drums, and guitar. We did a radio show with a small combination of, of musicians. Now, uh, you had a 2006 concert at uh, Lincoln Center in Rose Hall. Tell me about that experience. It was A lot of people have dubbed that like your comeback show. Oh, well, I'm, you know, that's funny because I never stopped working. <laughs> I've never been retired. And, and the good news is, up and down the Middle West, that's where I work, is um, Kansas City, and, and my, my people are in the Middle West, so I never stopped working. But in New York, the last time that I worked it was in 91, I think, uh, with a, in, a, in a jazz club, which closed. So there was no place for me to go in, in New York that was right for what I do until 2006, and there was a room that opened in 2006 called the Metropolitan Room, and we went there, and there were reviewers there. There was a big audience. I was surprised at the big audience because I hadn't worked in New York for 15 years, and uh, they were there. The people in New York, many performers, writers, singers, actors, um, they know, they have the history of, of so they knew me because they bone up on the history, and now the internet is is full of it. So uh, it's a wonderful thing. They all showed up, and it was a fun party. And I've been having parties in New York ever since for the last six years. 
Now, uh, Ella Fitzgerald uh, referred to you as the greatest white female singer in the world. That is not a racist statement. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I just and I want to say that. that that's that, that's, that's a heck of an accolade. It was. Um, she got on the Johnny Carson show and the Merv Griffin show and the Mike Douglas show in those days. Those are all... You're too young to remember those shows, but but. Uh, I remember Johnny. Yes, yeah. <laughs> I remember well, Johnny. Well, when they ask when they ask her who does she listen to, yeah, she said I listen to Carmen, which was Carmen McRae. I listen to Sarah, which uh, she called her Sassy, which is Sarah Vaughan, and uh, and Marilyn May is the greatest white singer. So we became very dear friends after that. <laughs> we became very close. We really did. She was a wonderful lady and, of course, the best. Now, uh, speaking of The Tonight Show, you did a record 76 times, is that? We did it 76 times. There are comedians that have done it more, yeah. but I hold the singer's record. Wow. Uh, we started in New York with the Skitch Henderson Band, and then... Um, uh, Finally, Doc Severinsen took over the band. When they moved to L.A., we did it so many times in L.A., so it was, Ed McMahon saw me in a club in New York and said, you need to come and do The Tonight Show, and I was so thrilled to get to do that. That's cool. Now, uh, you mentioned with the Internet, everybody... You know, Johnny, Johnny yeah. was a, a Midwestern boy, yep. and I am from Kansas City. He was from Nebraska. Uh, actually, he was born in Iowa. Uh, so I think that might have had a great deal to do with our rapport, although I didn't know that at the time. I looked back and, and realized that, that his great uh, appreciation of talent, there was no ego uh, involved with Johnny. He, he loved people that were good and, and supported them and, and pushed them and, and had them on their, their show on his show so much. Um, the band was great. The Doc Severinsen band was so wonderful. So it was, it was a great privilege to be on that show. Now, you mentioned earlier with the advent of the Internet, everybody can, can find who you are and know who you are. What do you think of social media with Facebook and Twitter and all these things <laughs> and YouTube? And I think it's a wonderful thing. Uh, I think it's a terrible thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's really good and really bad because people will sit in my audience and hold some little instrument. Exactly. And they will tape your show. And obviously, the sound and the, the sound is, instrument is yes. Not we've that heard great. that from many performers. Exactly, and then um, the um, pictures that are taken in the audience. When I work, I'm not I'm not a static performer. <laughs> I move a lot, and my face moves a lot, and they get pictures that are not flattering at all. Yeah. And then that haunts you. Yeah. So, but the good news is the good part of it all is that people know you and they can find you and follow what you're doing and and come and see you and read the reviews. There are so many online reviews that I'm so very thrilled about and grateful for. I haven't read a bad review, yeah. by the way. Well, they're just, it's just been <laughs> wonderful for me. And I'm this late in life, I'm really quite thrilled that it, that it has happened. Now, uh, I understand from my research, your signature song is It's Today. <laughs> Well, it's my mantra. It's not, I don't know signature song, but, but it's my mantra because of what it says. You value each and every day. And uh, um, the, the idea of keeping that in mind and being very grateful for each and every day is, is so prevalent with me and I hope with everybody in the audience. Now, I appreciate you doing this. Thank you. This, this, this has been fun. My, my final question here, um, sound checking here in the beautiful McPherson Opera House. John and the crew do a tremendous job here this is the, with the sound of the lights jewel. and everything. Give us your take on this wonderful building. It is a precious jewel sitting here in the middle of Kansas. I am so thrilled that somebody had the foresight uh, to promote the arts in this fashion. We have to have places to work. We, it's wonderful when it's a really beautiful place with great sound, with great lighting, and a stage. It's it's so nice. It's and lovely dressing rooms. I'm thrilled yeah. about that. Um, it's it's really a, a great credit to the people that decided to keep this forever. It's a it's it's 
something that should never be destroyed. They have restored it so beautifully, and I do hope all the people in Kansas will support it. That's the way it can stay open and alive for us entertainers, for the art of, of performance. Well, I appreciate you doing this. You're a wonderful performer. Thank Enjoyed you. Enjoyed meeting you. Enjoyed watching your beautiful sound check. Thank that was you. Thank amazing. You. It's and a rehearsal, really. <laughs> <laughs> I'm more of a rehearsal. Well, thanks for doing this. Thank I you. I want to thank John Holacek and the good folks here at the McPherson Opera House. Uh, I also want to thank the legendary and extraordinarily Marilyn May for uh, being with us today. And uh, thanks to Cousin Chris behind the camera. I am, of course, Jiggy Jag, Count Jigular, and this has been